Hi everyone, Nick Ellsmore here from Security Colony. Thanks for joining me for another video. Before I forget, we've just released the new user interface for the website. So please do log in, check it out at www.securitycolony.com. Uh, there's also a streamlined sign up process. All it requires is your email address and a password. So please do take the opportunity to set up a free account. In this video, I'll be talking about the concept of minimum viable security. Now, minimum viable security comes from the same school of thought as minimum viable product. Now, where a minimum viable product is a product that has the minimum set of features required to take it to market and get useful feedback from your customers, minimum viable security looks at the set of controls that you really require, one, to be able to say you've taken reasonable steps, and two, so that in the bad event that you do actually have an incident, you can justifiably say that you had put in place the controls that you should have put in place uh, based on what's expected in the market. The concept of minimum viable security is really about trying to manage the most common threats that an organization is going to face. So if you think about it like this, there are various levels of sophistication of attacks. And the most common attacks are going to be reasonably unsophisticated and then as the sophistication increases, fortunately, the frequency of those reduces. And so when we get down to APT attacks and the ones that get a lot of coverage in the media, fortunately, they're reasonably infrequent. So this is the frequency. At the same time, we have the cost to manage those attacks. So effectively, the cost to put the controls in place that are going to prevent or respond to those attacks. And the reality is the cost increases pretty rapidly as the sophistication increases for obvious reasons. So the concept of minimum viable security is that somewhere in here, there is a point at which it ceases to be effective to invest because the frequency, the likelihood just isn't high enough for your organization. So the concept of minimum viable security is what is this set of controls? What's the set of controls that's going to manage the majority of attacks that you're likely to experience. Next, I'm going to talk about the three source data sets that actually feed into defining what that minimum viable security is. The first is what organizations didn't do. Now, the concept here is that organizations that suffer security breaches have obviously been lacking a security control of some kind. And if we can actually define what that control was that was missing, then there's a pretty good justification for saying that that's going to be a required control for your organization. Because there is actually demonstrated evidence of people losing data, being compromised, because they didn't have it in place. The second is looking at what organizations say they do. Now, the idea here is that if across the industry, every organization says that they have a particular control in place, whether or not that's actually entirely accurate, that perception of ubiquity of a particular type of control really means that it's hard to justify not having it. Or at least if you are going to not have that control, you're really going to need to be able to explain well why that's the case. And the third is standards. Now, the wonderful thing about standards and information security is that there's so many you can really choose whichever one you like. Our approach here is to effectively look at as many standards as we can and see what they agree on. So our argument here is if a dozen, two dozen security standards actually all agree that a specific control is required, then again, it's going to be hard after an incident explaining why that control wasn't in place. Next, I'd just like to quickly run through some of the findings from our research for each of these three areas. The first is what organizations didn't do and the compromises that they experienced. As you'll see from the slide that's up on the screen at the moment, when we actually look at 30 breaches, primarily of Australian organizations since 2015, the key areas that organizations failed in were human error, uh, insufficient malicious code control, uh, insufficient secure coding, uh, improper error handling, and unpatched software, which realistically are all reasonably common uh, weaknesses that we find in, in a lot of organizations. 
Next, I'd like to run through what they say they do. Now, what they say they do is derived from industry surveys where they have statistics on control adoption reported by the organisations who have responded to the survey. There will be a slide up on the screen now that provides some of the analysis of this data. What you'll see when you look at this data is that a huge number of controls exist in either the very common or the standard uh, sections of the bell curve. What this suggests is that a lot of controls are considered commonplace. But in reality, there is no doubt a disconnect between what's said to be done and what is actually being done by most organisations. The third slide I'd quickly like to put up gives you an indication of the standards that we've covered when looking at that data set. As you'll see, we've covered some standards with a fairly common applicability, some that are more niche, and some at a fairly high level from a management perspective, and others that provide some more detailed technical implementation requirements. Now, when we take all of that together, and we effectively use a, an approach of saying what the organizations didn't do, what they said they do, and we really only want the controls that have over 50% adoption, and thirdly, the standards, effectively what we're looking for is the crossover between the three of them. That is what we consider to be the minimum viable security. We've put together a quick slide that shows the key controls that drop out of this approach. As you'll see from the list, there really shouldn't be much in there that's a surprise. And in a sense, that's a nature of minimum viable security. Most of these should be fairly common and fairly expected controls. Everything from physical security to patching to firewalls, security awareness, and malicious code management. But interestingly, there are some notable omissions from the list. Things like application whitelisting and data loss prevention, while they're talked about a lot in the industry, at the moment, simply don't have enough adoption to be able to be considered ubiquitous. So effectively, that's the concept of minimum viable security. The reality is it's, it's not a silver bullet. Uh, and having all of these controls in place certainly doesn't mean that you're uh, invulnerable to attack. And likewise, having all these controls in place doesn't mean that if you have an incident, it's going to be easy to explain it away. But certainly, when you look at what organizations didn't do and had problems with, what they say they do, so the ubiquity of controls and the industry standards, if you can pretty consistently implement the controls that meet all of those requirements or address all of those concerns, then I think you're in a pretty good position to explain that you have taken uh, reasonable steps and you have taken due diligence. One last comment on that is that almost always the quality of implementation is going to be more important than the volume of controls that you have in place. It's absolutely the case that implementing fewer controls and implementing them better is going to get you a better result from a security and risk management perspective. Now, all of the analysis and source materials related to these are available on our portal. You can set up a free account at www.securitycolony.com and you can download the material and get an idea of what each of these actually says. And also you can download the full presentation we delivered to the ISACA conference earlier this year that really provides a bit more context and a bit more material around minimum viable security. Thanks for watching and please do follow the Security Colony channel. There'll be lots more videos coming in the future.